and even though uh, I've switched out of the browser, it's still experiencing some difficulty with the, uh, the device here. It just um, definitely seems overtaxed because of that background task. You see I'm trying to scroll here and just not getting a lot of love from the device. This is one of the lag problems I've uh, mentioned in the beginning of the tape. Uh, I want to show you another one though. When you try to install an application, uh, it really, really slows down the device horribly. What I'm going to do while I'm here is I'm going to close out the other windows if it will allow me just to try to recover. There we go. Now things are running fine again. So I'm going to download the application. Here's the download manager. So now it's downloading. I'm going to jump back out to the main screen and see if we see the problems. Yes, notice the uh, little clock icon popping up intermittently. Um, device is very non-responsive right now. It's very difficult to get anything done. So you're best off just waiting until the download's done and then you can go back to what you were doing. Now that I've regained control of the device, I'm going to go into the social feeds application, show you how it pulls in all sorts of different feeds in one location. You can see Blackberry Messenger, Facebook, and Twitter, as well as uh, various other IM systems, all scrollable through here. I'm mostly a Twitter user. I don't really use uh, Facebook, so you're not seeing too many, if any, uh, Facebook updates mixed in here. can switch to just uh, Facebook, though, or any of the other services, for example, just Twitter. If you zip through, you can notice that there's a couple of different things you can take a look at. Go back to all items, and then I can get to RSS feeds. You can add new RSS feeds. You can see uh, we've got some of our own in there. So pretty nice application, uh, social feeds, and it gets everything in one location. It's pretty easy to manage. One aspect where the BlackBerry platform uh, hurts a bit compared to Android and iPhone, for example, is in the application store. Uh, this is the BlackBerry app world. allows you to go through and look at applications. Um, not a great variety. You can see there's uh, maybe 1,700 applications total available. It just uh, doesn't have you know, the hundreds of thousands of apps you can find with uh, the two big players, or even Microsoft's platform has many times more applications than BlackBerry does at this point, even though the store has been around for a fair amount of time. Here's uh, the settings and options for everything. It's uh, better organized, uh, some nice colorful icons that make it clear what's going on and what sections you're in here. Um, a million different settings you can change on a BlackBerry. Electronic Compass just uses the uh, build an electronic compass function. You can see it uh, works pretty smoothly. Voice Note Recorder. This is a test voice note, and I'm going to play it back in a second, make sure it works. Show you the files application. It's a simple file manager. You can see you can navigate through everything. Works on the internal storage as well as uh, any external micro SD memory cards that you might insert into the device. Built in maps functionality. I also installed Google Maps, which also works. Connection manager. Allows you to quickly turn on and off Bluetooth, uh, put the phone into uh, airplane mode or anything like that. The all off button puts it into airplane mode. Also some uh, wizards for setting up Wi-Fi networks and similar things. I'm going to show you the camera. I'm going to hold down the shutter key here to load it. Automatically focuses whenever you stop moving, change subject. You can see the little green lines perhaps coming down. 
a dual stage uh, button here, this convenience button, so it actually can be used to focus and then uh, take the photo by pressing fully. You see we've got access to some controls down here for uh, cycling through the flash modes, putting onto auto flash for example. Menu gives us access to more settings. And that reminds me, we go into the media view and you'll see just the media related applications here, including the camcorder. We can record 720p video. Record recording right now. We'll stop this and play it back. Also go into the pictures browser so you can see some of the photos I've shot. Macro mode, automatic macro mode works pretty well. You can see how this photo of a sneaker tip came out pretty well. This is carpeting, a uh, child's toy. I've been actually pretty impressed um, with the camera. You can see this is a flash photo versus a non-flash. Again, no flash versus flash. Um, takes really nice photos. It's still only 5 megapixels in resolution, but it seems pretty capable overall. I have not preloaded the device with a lot of music here, but I do have one track on here so I can just show you what it looks like. Of course it plays in the background. And uh, one thing, if you hold down the menu button on the BlackBerry device, it gives you quick access to recently used applications, so I can get back to the music app, for example. So that's my very abridged look at the BlackBerry Torch 9810 for AT&T. It'll be available for $49.99 on August 21st. It's a nice device. Um, it can't really compete with the likes of uh, Android and iPhone in terms of the full, you know, superpower touchscreen uh, user experience. But for BlackBerry users, this is going to be a really nice compromise. And, um, nice touchscreen, solid hardware, good functionality, and uh, you know everything that a BlackBerry user expects, including you know great messaging support. So, and especially for fifty dollars, you can hardly uh, complain about that. So again, that is the BlackBerry Torch 9810. I'm Michael Oral from MobileBurn.com. Thanks for watching.